sure I've got. Move this camera just a little bit back. Okay, I think you can see it maybe a little better, I hope. I hope. Let me see here. Yeah, okay. Looks good. Um, okay, you've got your clean water here. You've got your uh, watercolor paper. I've grabbed a couple of brushes. I'll probably, honestly, probably just use one of these. You can have a flat brush, too. I didn't grab it, but I, uh, I meant to grab it. Hold on, guys. Let me grab it. I didn't mean to I have this little bag here with all kinds of different watercolor brushes. <clears throat> I like this. Some big ones, little ones. Uh, they keep it coming. There it is, right here. So the half inch flat is what I want to use tonight. Along with one of the rounds, probably. Just kind of depends. Okay. Then you have your paper towels, <clears throat> and of course, you have your watercolor. And like I told you before, most of the colors that I'm going to be using is kind of a earthy, what I call kind of earthy green. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it goes more towards the yellow instead of the blue. You no, know, it's got a little bit more yellow in it. This over here green's got a little bit more blue. So I'm going to use more of the natural looking green. Uh, probably some light green, some brown, black, and some of these yellows. So just kind of whatever hits me, right? I'm gonna, just going to kind of play around with it and see what happens. So let's get started. And I got my, uh, this is a watercolor pencil. You can use a regular pencil, but a lot of times I like to use a watercolor pencil. So I try not to leave any lines. You know, you want to be able to uh, see, you know, your sketch, but you don't want it so dark. You know, you don't want it dark where it's, uh, it's not like acrylic paint where you can paint over the lines. This is a little different. So I'm going to use my watercolor pencil and I'm going to sketch here with you and show you. Uh, I've lightly done a pre-sketch here. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let's see. But we're going to do it together. So you've got your paper here and the way I've done mine I've kind of centered it. So I've got you know from the bottom of the paper to almost probably the bottom of my stem is probably about two inches. And up here it's about an inch and a half. It's not exactly centered but it's, it's pretty close. And I could always pull down my stem and I probably will a little bit more. I've got it kind of centered on the sides too. So I think uh, one of the easiest things to do is to just uh, sometimes I think it's easier to start maybe in the center area. So we're going to start in the center of that. Uh, you know what guys I just realized my picture is not going to be on. Oh goodness. I wonder if I can do that now. You've lost your picture haven't you guys. I wonder if I can do that. Hang with me just a minute. Hang with me. Let me see if I can get, because I put it on the the front camera, and you need it on the other one, too. Let me see if we can do this. I hope I don't lose you. If I lose you guys, hang with me, and I'll be right back on. I promise. We might be able to do this online. Hoping. But if I lose you, remember, I'll be right back on. Okay, now that's a little too big. So we got to work on that a second. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Now maybe we got it. Yay. So far, so good, I think. A little delay, but it should be picking up okay, I think. <laughs> Get to watch in real time. You lost it. Can you see me now, guys? Tell me if you can see me. Can you see me?
Okay, good, Sue. Good. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay, we got it. Now you can see the painting, too. Okay, so we're going to start in the center here. And we're going to go ahead and do probably this top right hand leaf. And basically, it is almost an egg shape, just kind of upside down. I'm going to start here. I'm going to come up. Round. There you go. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and do the one next to it. It's about, I start about the middle from the bottom of my leaf to the top. If I was going to go and do the center, the middle part between here and here, it would start about right here. So I'm going to go straight up here and kind of angle towards the left, curve around, come down at an angle, curve back around, and go in the center. Thanks, Janet. Okay, the sh okay, the shamrock. Okay. Okay, guys. Now we're going to go ahead and come on down to the next one. And it's basically the same thing from the bottom of the leaf to the top. It's about the center part here is where I'm going to start again. I'm going to come over to the left. Start angling down. And make it come back up. So as far as diameter, mine are about two inches wide. I would say they're about two inches wide, my leaves, from side to side. Now, you know, that's entirely up to you guys, though, but mine are about two inches wide. Let's do the bottom one. Down. Then I have like a little, I'm giving it a little bit of character. I'm coming up and down round to that center again. Okay. Then right here. What's well, lagging quite a bit? There we go. I think it caught up. Okay, we're going to start in the center. We're going to do the stem. Round. And I've angled it. Whatever you do, give your stem a little character. Don't just stick it straight out. Give it a little bit of character. Have it bend somehow. Kind of bending in the wind. So you should have something similar to this. Make sure, though, before you start watercoloring, that you're happy with the shape. Make sure that you're happy with it. You know, because when you start coloring, you know, when you start a painting, it's going to... Uh, you know, if you're not happy with the shape to start off with, you won't be happy with it later. That's just uh, something I find out myself. So I have my water and I have my brushes. I've got the design, right? So we're going to start looking at these. I'm going to move this over just a little bit here. Make more room so you can see. Make sure you can see all my paints. Okay. So like I said, the colors that I'm going to be using is uh, the greens, different shades of greens, yellows. That's mainly what makes up the little clover, right? And then we're going to add some dimension and some shading with the darker uh, brown and some green mixed together. And that will create more depth. So the first thing we're going to do, and basically it's just a lot of layering. You can use either brush. You can use your half inch brush here which will make it smooth. So when you're starting to paint, you're kind of going to go around the edges and just kind of smooth it out, right? Now you can use your round brush, but you're going to have a little bit more ridges probably with that. You just experiment. If you have two brushes, just try and see. See what, you've, uh, what you can do with it. So mine are watercolor brushes, meaning they will pick up more of the... Uh, water they hold a lot more water than your regular like one of these that i use for you know which that's crazy that's a crazy brush there 
but uh, they will hold a lot more water than these little acrylic brushes, you know, that I use. So uh, watercolor wa uh, brushes are pretty, pretty nice to have. If you don't have any and you like watercolor, I would highly recommend trying to get you some. So I'm going to start with just a uh, medium shade of green which is this kind of right here. I'm going to show you what I've got. Get this tray out. I'm going to paint on this tray. And you see that color there. It's not real light, not real dark, just kind of a medium shade. So I'm dipping my brush in water and I'm going to just start painting using that shade of green. It's kind of like a color book painting, you know? Now, I did my lines darker so you can see them. Normally, I would not have done them like that. But I want you to be able to see when I, uh, when I uh, drew them. Now, the thing with watercolor is layers, right? You're not going to get your color that you want with your first layer. I'm going to, that was done with my half inch flat. I'm going to use this number eight round brush and I'm going to see and show you how it kind of reacts to. Same color. See it just holds a little bit more water. I'm just going back and forth to pick up some paint and just filling that in. But it does leave, see how it might leave a little bit more creases, things like that. So in that way, I, I'm more comfortable with my flat brush, to be honest, giving it more of a smooth look. Okay, so I've got those. I'm going to go on around, continue around, same paint, same color, continue around. Hope everybody's had a good day. It's good to see you guys on here. As always, I would like for you to post your work when you get done, if you would like to. Everybody likes to see other people's work. You know, it's not a uh, contest. It's not a, you know, we're not doing that. We're just trying to uplift everybody and encourage them along their journey here of creating. Try to keep your pigment very similar in color. This is a good experiment with that, too. It's good practice, I guess. Not an experiment, a good practice with this. Trying to keep it as uh, smooth as you can. Same color. See right here is a little bit darker. Nothing wrong with that, but these two are more like the same color. And that just depends on how much paint you've picked up or how much water you have on your brush. <clears throat> Looks like an upside down heart. Yeah, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yes. And sometimes you can, you can draw them like that, little hearts. I've seen people do that too. Okay, I'm going to go ahead while this is drying because the thing with watercolor, when you're adding your layers, in this case, we want these to dry before we add another layer. So therefore, once you get this part done, your first layer, let's go ahead and you probably want maybe a round brush that has more of a point. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to paint the same color. I'm going to paint the stem. So I'm going to start here. I'm just going to follow that stem around. Probably make it tad bit wider at the top by the leaves. I 
I gave a class today through EVSC and I went out yesterday and I noticed the clover. Clover is, gosh, in, in places in the yard is about four or five inches tall. And we were doing art with using natural materials and I picked some of that to make monoprints uh, with them. And uh, it was fun. It makes some unusual prints, you know, the way it looks. And I'm going to uh, use my flat brush kind of on the chisel edge and just kind of soften that a little bit, that stem, just pulling a little bit. A little too dark right here. So uh, now if you get started on, on one of these leaves and it's not completely dry before you add some more color to it, you might be sorry. Uh, when you have it still wet, you're adding some more wet to that. You're, it's, you know, that's the thing with watercolor is it just has a mind of its own. And that's why some people do not like painting with it. But I enjoy it because I'm not doing a masterpiece with it. I enjoy doing things like this and experimenting with color and, and uh, things like that. So I'm not stressing about it. Uh, but if you're very serious with it, a lot of uh, artists will, you know, they have sometimes troubles with it. And it's because you can't, it's hard to control. Watercolor is hard to control. With paint, you know, with acrylic paint, you put it, it goes where you put it down, right? It's not the case with your watercolor. And uh, it can um, it can just melt all over the place <laughs> if it wants to. So kind of check to make sure that your leaves are dry. And they probably are. Mine will dry a little quicker because of the lights. But uh, So what we're going to do is just start building up some color. So right now I'm going to do uh, probably the same color that I had. Except I'm going to show you something when I add a little bit more of the same color to my shamrock. So see? Just one more layer of that exact same color and how much richer that looks. So go over your leaves again with that same color that you originally put on there. See the difference between these two already? Now I'm not making a big puddle over here of paint and mixing a bunch. I'm just, for something like this, I'm just uh, taking my water and kind of uh, dipping it a little bit in my uh, green paint and using that. Now when you are painting a painting and you need to have the exact same color uh, for something, you need to make sure that you mix up enough of your color to uh, complete you know, your project. But in something like this, since this is small, I am uh, just kind of mixing a little bit at a time because it's it's uh, it's got so many shades of green anyway, right? Nothing's going to hurt on this. It's already coming to life. I think, and you, those of you that know me, I, I do believe in watercolor being so soothing. It's a stress reducer, I feel like. Especially if you're doing things like this, you know. It's just the, the water moving around and just makes a difference. Go ahead and do your stem again, too. Okay. What size paper? Sue, I am using that same tablet I usually use, but it's a 7 by 10. I usually tell you, but I forgot, I think I forgot to do that. It's 140 pound, 
but uh, this one is a 7 by 10 inch. But even if you have a larger one, or it wouldn't have mattered if it was larger or smaller, what you're, if you're using, you're still going to probably, uh, you know, have some at the top, space, bottom, and side. So matter, no matter what size that you're painting on, you'll kind of uh, get it in the right proportion, I'm sure. But this one is good. I've used this all the time. Um, I'll let that dry just a minute. Here's the original one right here that we're doing. And then, uh, of course, we did our other activities on this, too. So I like to keep it uh, for references and just keep, uh, I uh, put the dates usually on the back and uh, what class I've done. And it, it helps me to keep it organized, too. So I do like the spiral. I like this brand. Uh, make sure, though, uh, that it is 140 pound. It tells you right on the bottom here. You can get these pretty well on sale most places, water, uh, water color, Michaels, uh, Hobby Lobby, you can get it online too. Uh, but this is a good one, it's a cold press, and uh, I think this is a nice size, uh, especially for classes, I do, and it's a good size for practice. I've got watercolor blocks, and we'll talk more about those kind of things later too. Um, and uh, I like watercolor blocks also. But uh, for classes, I think this is really good. This is what I prefer. So, um, make sure that this is, mine is still a little damp. So, we're going to have to kind of wait a minute. If you've got a hair dryer, you can blow that if you want. While I am waiting on mine to dry for a minute, uh, I'm going to change to the front camera. I'm going to show you guys something. We'll wait just a couple of minutes and let that dry a little bit more. So, uh, the, let me get my calendar here, make sure I tell you the right date. I don't want to tell you the wrong date. So, let me make sure I got it right here. So, uh, tonight is course of six, and we're doing the, the shamrock. Sunday at four o'clock, so watch the time difference. At four o'clock, we're doing the neurographic art. And um, I want you to think, before we do this, uh, Sunday at 4, this coming Sunday at 4, I want you, before you start, I want you to think of something that, um, uh, something in your mind, maybe that, uh, I don't want to say a goal, not that, but um, something that you might uh, want to concentrate on when we do the artwork Sunday. Uh, that's probably about the best way to put it right now. Just something you want to concentrate on when we're actually doing the artwork. Um, I hope we have a good turnout for that. I don't know. No, uh, there's all kinds of classes for this. There's all kinds of different ways to do this. And I'll show you, you know, how I do it. And uh, so that is Sunday at 4. The 19th, which is a Tuesday at 6, we're going to do just a fun little... Whimsy Easter Rabbit. Here he is. He's right here. So he's just, he's got, uh, you know, let me get him a little closer. You can see him. He's just kind of a cute little whimsical Easter Rabbit. It'd be fun to do. Um, you can do it watercolor. This guy is acrylic. So you can use that. Uh, if you would choose uh, to use acrylic, you sure can. So that is the next two things that we've got for the month coming up. Uh, the calendar is on the the group page too, so you'll see that. And I'm going to put the information on the rabbit uh, probably tonight. I'll probably tonight or tomorrow. I'll put it on the in the group too that you need. So let's go ahead and we're going to start. Yeah, Sue, I think it was kind of a cute little bunny. I mean, I you know, there's so many things I got sketched out and drawn and stuff, but I thought, well, you know, he's kind of a happy little guy, and uh, I said it was going to be whimsical. So I think he will be uh, kind of fun. And of course, if you want to, you can add some kind of background or whatever you'd like. But we'll do this little guy here. So, okay. You should be dry on your leaves again. Now we're going to start really adding some more depth uh, to this. So we're going to darken up the colors now. 
So you can use, I'm going to get that same green myself. I'm going to pull it over here to the side. Okay. I'm going to wash my brush out and I'm going to get a tad bit of brown on my brush. And I'm adding it to that green. It's kind of a muddy, kind of a muddy type of a color. I'm going to add a little bit more green to it. I don't quite want it quite that brown, I don't think, yet. And I'm just doing it with my brush. Just kind of adding a little color here, a little color there. Adding a little bit more water to it. Okay, now we're going to start darkening a few areas. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, if you look on the, let me show you first, let's look on the original. You can see it up in the picture too. But if you look here, you've got a little bit of brown kind of in the center of these where the uh, uh, leaves start coming out. It's a little darker. You've got a little darkness around the outside edge here, a little bit over here, right here, but that's a lot of, that's some black too though. But there's little touches of a darker green in places like around here around here. So we're going to kind of hit and miss a few places with a darker green. And that's what I just mixed. It's got a little bit of brown in it, a little bit of green. So let's try that. I'm just going to lay that down. I'm going to come around. And just kind of, instead of, don't leave a line, just kind of pull that in towards the center of your leaf. Darker in the center here too. Okay. Blend that a little bit. Let me show you here. Closer up. See how that is? Kind of went around here. This is my top left leaf around here and kind of darker in the center here. And I left kind of that center lighter. So keep that just like that. Okay, then we're going to do the bottom left. Kind of basically the same way. I'm going to start in the center and darken that and then underneath this leaf I'm going to darken and pull that up a little bit into the leaf. Just short little strokes. I'm not covering the whole leaf. I'm still leaving areas that are lighter. Just soften that. If you get too much, uh, kind of blot uh, your brush a little bit on your paper towel and just smooth that out. I, you don't want to see a bunch of lines. You're not coming around here and leaving lines. You want it to be have an organic feel. So meaning like right here, there's little ridges. It's not straight up across. You know, I didn't pull it up straight up. But that's not really straight. You've got a, an organic feel to it where there's light and dark, right? Same thing on each one of these petals. So go ahead and go on around and do the other ones. I'm going to start in the middle here. Pull some up. Soften that a little bit, come up towards the center again. At the top, I'm going to darken a little bit more too. And pull it back down. It kind of just flows, actually. You, don't, you shouldn't need to work with it a whole lot. I'm going to start with that, that bottom, or that top right leaf. Not start, I'm going to finish with that top right leaf. I'm going to go this way. But darker towards the base. And darker a little bit towards the top. Again. Okay. 
you know, it's up to you how far you go down. This, this is your painting. I'm just kind of showing you how I've done mine. Everybody's is going to look different. Absolutely. Absolutely different. Now, when you get those leaves, I'm going to get my small round brush and I'm going to use the same color that I mixed up. I'm going to go into and uh, paint the, uh, the same thing with the stem here. Just kind of go over a little bit with that darker, a little bit darker value of green. It's not very noticeable because the stem is very small, but uh, you'll still be able to see some of it. I'm going to actually dip in my brown, mix that with that other. And at the base, right at the top of my stem, right at the base of the leaves, I'm darkening that. So see, your stem should be damp because I told you to go over it first. So that watercolor that we're putting on now, a little bit brown, is going to kind of mix with that other green that we just did. It's called wet on wet, and it will just have it, its own little fun time because it was already wet. We're laying, laying down another wet uh, paint and it's just going to kind of mix and have its own little fun. That's the fun part of watercolor, I think. I think that's the fun part. So you can just work on that stem as much as you want. You want to try to keep it as natural as you can. Okay, so for me, these leaves are not uh, green enough. They're not green enough, so I'm going to mix up another green. I'm going to still use that same one I had, actually, and I'm going to add it to this same mixture that I just added some brown to. So we're going to darken it up a little bit more. Go here. This is going to start making it come alive now, guys. I'm going to still going to go over basically the same brush strokes, the same area that I went over just the last time we did this. Okay. Remember, try to keep it fairly smooth and have an organic feel to it. You want some light and dark in there. Now, watch me. As I painted that, it's, it's damp, isn't it? So I just put that last layer of that darker green on here. And now, while that is wet, I dipped my brush in the brown, just straight brown, and I'm kind of tapping the edge of that leaf. The very top edge of that leaf with the brown. Now by doing that, it's not like a straight line. And it and pull it down a little bit. And now that is going to start mixing with that green. You need to add a little bit more water if it's too dry. It wants you want it to mix. You want it to mix. So just pull some of that brown back down a little bit in that leaf. And you should have something similar to this. So you've got your darker green, lighter green, and going back darker here, even the darkest value through here, by adding that brown. Now, if you don't like this green in the center, pull some more green down into it. Darken it a little bit. There's no, uh, it's not a right or wrong thing. If this is too light, which it is a little too light for me too, I'm going to add a little bit more green to that center. It kind of blends a little bit better. 
Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with that right there. See the difference, what we just got through doing here compared to that? And all the difference is, is we darkened a little bit of darker green with brown here and here like we did before, those same areas. But then while this was still wet, I added just a little bit of brown on that outside edge. And that brown, because this is wet, the green's wet, the brown just mixed with it. And I might have had to move it a little bit, move it around. So you should have a darker value here at the base of the leaf and darker value up here. Now, if you get to this point, I wouldn't mess with it anymore. I'd let that, that thing dry. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the next leaf. So I'm going to go back down here. Got, got my brownish kind of green mix here going on. It's the same area. I've got the base of the leaf, the top of the leaf. I'm kind of pulling it down towards the center of the leaf. And then the bottom, the base, I'm pulling up towards the center a little bit. Okay. And while that is still wet, I'm washing my brush out and blotting it on the towel. I'm dipping a little bit of paint, uh, or dipping my brush in the brown paint. Kind of hitting the edges here with the brown paint. Probably a tad bit right here in the center, too. Okay, I'm going to pull some of that brown up to the center, but not too far. And pull some of this brown that's at the top down towards the leaf. I just don't want a funny little line, right? If you're having trouble with it not wanting to blend much, then add a little bit of water to it. Just add a tad, tad bit of water on your brush and tap, start tapping it gently, and that will blend on its own. Okay. Kind of just play with it. Play with this. See what color you like. It needs a little bit browner there. Okay. Okay, I'm going to jump down to this, this bottom leaf. Same thing. Go with the green. Now, I don't want to get into this here because if I touch that leaf that's already wet next to me, then we've got some problems. It's going to bleed on over to this leaf. So, remember, the watercolor travels and it likes to, it likes to find the water, right? So, if your object or whatever it is that you're painting if you're getting close to something, up close to something, if this is still wet on one side and you're trying to paint the other side, unless you want it to melt together and and uh, have their own little party, then I would let it dry. So what I've done here is, can you see I left a little space right there that's dry when I've done this one. So that way this watercolor won't come over here. It won't travel on the dry, but if this, if I paint it all the way up to that edge and made it wet and that's wet, then that brown is going to travel on down. So, you know, sometimes you don't want that. So just kind of be aware of that. And we'll learn more about that when we watercolor more. Okay, I've got my darker green on here. Now I'm going to get my brown again like I did before. Same, same method. Get down there at the base, add touches some brown, and right over here to the top of my leaf, add in a little bit of darkness there, a little bit different dark shade. Just pulling it up, just playing with it. How's everybody doing? Can you move your paint? Oh, Tim. <laughs> Can you move your paint and paper to the left this way? Is that better?
to get it out of focus, guys. Sorry if I did that. That's so easy to do here when you're doing these things. It's so easy. Get carried away and you're paying attention to what you're painting and you... <laughs> okay, thank you. It's always good to have a somebody to help you. Tim's kind of watching too, so... Hey, if you want to darken any of the center areas, now is probably the time to do it too as you're going around with that last... Uh, last leaf we're going to do that again same thing the darker green simplifies it if we kind of do the steps same okay while that is damp we're going to touch the brown again Now some, remember, everybody's going to look a little different, right? Some's going to use a little bit more brown. Some's going to use maybe a little bit more green. That's okay. That's okay. It's your painting. You do it how you want to do it. I'll pull a little bit of that green down in my leaf there. Okay, how's everybody else doing? Let's see if I got any more comments. Okay. Give me a drink of coffee here while we're letting that dry. Yours should look similar to this. Now what we're going to do next though is we're going to get into the yellows. So we're going to brighten this up some. But we need to let this dry a minute. So I'm going to show you the original again. I didn't want to tear it out of the book so I haven't kind of done it like this. See the original here. See how there's yellows in certain areas? That's going to be kind of your highlights. Where we've got that step to do. We've also got the darker black to do too. And then we should be our veins and we should be really good. Uh, we've got a shadow here that we're going to do too. But that won't take long at all. So uh, the uh, next step is we're going to do the black actually first and then that way I want you to see how much you need to lighten it up. Um, get your green the way you like it. If you wanted a little bit darker green then now's your time to do it. So I'm going to show you an example here. Let's say uh, this, this leaf here is behind this one so I'm going to darken it some. I'll make it a little bit dark and I'm just using straight paint here straight it's not any mixture it's just the green the original green so I'm just lightly going over that now see how that created a darker because it's another layer by doing that little simple trick and this one is a little lighter right now then that looks like that pet or that uh, part of the leaf is behind this one, right? Okay. So if there's any of them that you want to darken now, go ahead and do it before we get the, the uh, uh, black and stuff on there. There might be, there might not be, you might be fine with the color, but I'm just showing you that, that you can always add some more green on these if you choose to. 
I'm just pulling and doing a few more green here and there to get a little bit more of a shamrock color if it's a little light for you. And that's when you need to do that. So I haven't used, but I've only used one green. That first one that I showed you guys. Just one. Now I'm just doing very lightly. Very, very lightly. That green over the top of this. Because I wanted a little bit, just a little bit more uh, kind of a shamrock shade, I guess. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's jump to the stem again. We're going to take our round brush here. We're going to get into the black. Either a dark gray or a black. Mine's a black. Right at the base of that, I'm darkening that stem black. And on the very bottom of that stem, which is so small... You guys probably can't see that, but I'm darkening that. So on the right side of that stem, it's still green, but that left side, it is black. So I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna wash it out, and just kind of tap a little bit of water in that and to create a darker, a darker stem. Just kind of work your brush up and down a little bit. You want to see green and a black value or a darker value in that stem. So let me show you a little closer. Can you see that? So you can see a little bit of a light green and then you're darker. Now, that's too black for me, so I'm going to touch it with a little bit of green while that's still damp. Just adding a little bit lighter green there. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna start doing that outside edge Get this again, show you again, see how the edges are. Edges are a little bit thin black. Not all the edges, like right here, I didn't go around black. So don't, don't outline. It's not really an outline because not all of it is outlined. You just want a few places in your darkest value. So you can do the darkest value either a uh, like a gray a really dark green but I'm gonna do I'm gonna still use that black so I've got my black here and I'm using my round brush let's start at this top left one and we don't want to have um, just like a line right I keep on saying that because most people that's what they want to do and that's why I'm, I'm kind of warning you I'm gonna touch the center so I want the darkest value at the bottom of that leaf. And I'm tapping it with a little bit of black. And I want the darkest value up here. So pull that into, after you get that dark value up there, kind of pull it into that leaf. So it doesn't look like exact a line. Pull it in to make some of the places a little wider. You don't want to see like you've just done it with a Sharpie. That's what you don't want to see. See right there? So I lined it actually, but then I pulled that paint in towards the center of that leaf to soften that. Same thing here. I dab, dab back there and then I'm going to pull some of that inside. I'm going to add a little water. My brush is kind of drying out. I'm going to add a little bit of water and kind of just use that to create 
depth in that painting. Okay? So you're going to go around and you're going to actually do that to all those leaves. See, I lifted some of that up, so I'm going to come back. Some of my paint, because it was wet, I had a little bit more green there. Some of my paint lifted because I was playing with it too much. And if you play with it too much, it will lift up. Okay, so I'm going to go back, take my round brush, I'm going to get into that black again. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just kind of touching around some of these edges with the black. I don't want you to do the whole edge. I just want you to do parts of it. So just kind of pick what you would like, which areas you kind of want. I've done the top here. And then I stopped. And I'm doing this over here on the left side. I'm going to come down do maybe a little bit more here. Add a little washer brush out, add a little water, and then pull that into the center, more of the center of that leaf. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go on around to the next leaf, that bottom leaf. Now, it doesn't have as much black on it. It's just kind of a few places. So I'm going to just hit a few places. Just to darken it, but not, not a lot. Touching it with that black. And then I'm pulling it in towards the center. Kind of dabbing, actually. These leaves, I think, do well just kind of dabbing. Not really too much brush strokes, just kind of smoothing out. And this top leaf, the top right, you're going to do the same thing. Now, the thing is, this leaf on the left needs to be pretty dry before you do this top right one. Let me show you closely. See, I touched up this area here on this leaf, so it's still damp. If I come up on this one and I start adding that black right here on this line, it's gonna go off to my left leaf because that's still wet. So I'm, I'm gonna stay clear of that until that gets dry. And if you've experimented enough, you'll you'll know that. You'll know what happens <laughs> when that when that does happen. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna stay clear from right here right now. And I'm just gonna go here and add a little bit of uh, dark uh, turn around at the top, maybe a little bit over here on the side. Wash my brush out and kind of soften that. So there's not a line. Doing good, guys. Okay, my center here needs to still be a little bit darker. 
So I am going to add a little bit more, another layer of that black, kind of the center of the, the, the uh, leaves coming down into the stem. A little bit darker value there. Now, while I'm waiting on this right here to dry, what I'm going to do, if this is pretty dry here and your stem is dry, then we're going to do just a tiny bit of a shadow. And I don't know if you can really see it much, but you can on your paper. I don't know whether you can see it on this other one or not. Let me show you again. See what you, so you can kind of tell what I'm doing. See the shadow right here? It's right here. It's along the stem. It's just a very light gray. It's right here. And it's right here. So there's one area. Here's one in the center. That's two. One here, three. And the stem, four. And this. So basically, basically, actually, it's a little bit right there, too. So on the right side, of each leaf. So it's the right side of here, right side of here, right side of here, underneath a little bit there, and then the center here. We're going to do a very, very light gray. It gives a shadow effect. So I liked my flat brush for this because you don't want a line. Again, you don't want a line of gray, a line of gray. So you want to try to get your black so you're going to get into your black paint and you're going to add, you know, there's not gray, right? So you're going to add water to that. And you're just going to go around. See? See that shadow? Okay, let's do another one. You've just got my water and my black paint, and it's very, it's very uh, light. I'm going to go around this edge, the right side edge of that stem. You see it? Just come down like that. Okay, I'm going to go on the right side of this bottom leaf. Just kind of come around and down. Just the right side. Right here, a little bit of a shadow there. Now this leaf doesn't have as much opening, so I might just do a little bit right here. And the, the right side of this leaf. It's just a hint, it's just a hint. It's not much, but it gives a shadow look to your uh, leaves, a little bit of depth, okay. So now we're going to add the yellow. Might be able to add a little bit of my black there now. Mine's dry, pretty dry. Add just a little bit more black. Same method, you're kind of pulling it down into the leaf. And you can just play with this as much as you want, whatever kind of dark, uh, however dark you want. You can create, like right here, I can do, go a little bit more black if I choose to. This is the Kind of the basic, basically the same strokes, the same movement, the same thing for each one. You just kind of go over it when they dry as, as dark as you want it, you know. Whatever the darkest value you want, you just keep it going.
can't wait to see what you guys have created with this. See, I'm just adding, I'm just darkening it just a little bit more than what I had it. And you guys might already have yours the way you want it. I wanted to show it a little bit more darker on the ends of those leaves, basically. Okay. Okay, guys. You're hanging with me, I think. So, I've added as dark as I'm going to get this one. This is what I want to do. You know, I'm going to leave it like that. Now, what I'm going to do now is start adding some yellows. Now, make sure you don't put it in next to uh, the darker. If you've added more dark like I just did, mine is still a wet, right? So I don't want to get into that area, right? This damp, I don't want to get into that yet. Um, so I want to get into my yellows. So I, I think I want to get a bright yellow here. See this bright yellow, kind of a lemon yellow. I want to get my brush into that. Still damp, you know, still got a lot of water on it. So I'm going to start with my half inch brush and I'm just laying down some yellow paint different areas but I'm not getting into my black and this is going to start to add a highlight now I don't have like I'm not on this one really showing too much about where the sunlight's at and this and that and you know, put the highlight on the right or the left. We're just adding some color to our, our shadows are on the right, but we're going to just add some color because I want you to play with it. I see how much that changed that already, just adding that pop of yellow on there. Added quite a bit. I'm going to use my small round brush and I'm going to go in and kind of highlight a few places with a little thin line of yellow, like about the halfway mark between the top and the bottom of that stem. I've got a little bit lighter yellow. Kind of looks like a little bit of sunlight's on there. Any other areas that you feel like you need to use your, like a narrow brush? Because I still see a little bit of my, uh, my watercolor pencil from when I sketched it. So I'm just kind of edging around a little bit in places that I, I see that line. I don't want to see that line. Places that my watercolor paint didn't kind of cover the the uh, bra the uh, pencil mark. I'm just kind of going over that a little bit. Now it's kind of touch up time, guys. It's just kind of you're just touching up a few things, getting it the way you want it, and adding whatever colors that you would like. I want to add a little bit of brown to that center again. I don't like that brown there in the middle. Just work that through. Soften it. Of course, it's going to dry lighter. Okay. 
We're pretty close to the original in values. We've got our lights and our darks, but some yellow. We do not have our little veins, which will make a difference. So let me show you this one again closer. Now I'm going to give you a kind of a word of warning. I have taught some people before and they're so proud of their flowers or leaves until we get to this point. And a lot of people, and I've done it myself in the past, a lot of people for some reason, they want to put the veins in just so prominent. I mean, it's like, wow, it's just boom, it's there, right? I would, I would rather see you do less is best. If you're looking at these veins here on this paper here, you don't see every little line here, right? You don't see all of them. Some of them are missing. You want to try to make it look kind of natural, right? So what a lot of people do, a tendency that they have to do, is they, they will start out and they'll just draw a line. And it's straight as a stick. No movement to it. No, you know, little angle to it. It's just shoop, right there. And then line out, line out, line out, line out, line And so please don't do that. <laughs> because it, you might not be happy with it. Now, you can either paint these on, which is what I'm going to do. You can use, you can use one of these micron thin pens if you choose to. You can, you know, if you're a little shaky or something with the brush, there's nothing wrong with this. But just try to remember to try to start. We're going to start at the center and kind of angle a little bit. Now, you don't want a big hook, but just a little angle and a few little sprigs here and there that goes out, right? Kind of make it not so dark. You can always darken it, right? Try to make it not so dark <clears throat> and uh, give it some life, like I always say. So I'm going to take my round brush, the one that's got the really good point, and I'm going to get into, actually I'm going to do brown paint instead of the black. Um... Uh, we're going to see. It depends on kind of your colors, too. Now, you got to be careful. Make sure you're dry. And you're going to just do a line. And then maybe one off to the side on that side. And maybe another one off to the side on that side. A little shorter. You know, just kind of do something like that. If that is too stark, which let me show you. See, that's too stark for me. I don't like that. So I'm going to take my flat brush and I'm just going to kind of tap it a little bit with with a little bit of water. And it's going to kind of soften up itself. See how much that changed? And I'm, I'm good with that right now. So I'm going to do the same thing again. This one down here, I'm going to come down. Do a line, a little bit of angled, a few little things off to the side here. And if it's still a little too stark, I'm just going to tap it a little, lightly with my brush to soften it. You can just kind of, it's called lifting up also when you're taking a brush or something and you're kind of removing a little bit, that's called lifting. And uh, you can do that with your brush. So let's try another leaf here. Same method. This one has a few more, it's a little bit larger leaf. So I'm adding a few more little lines to it and I'm just softening those a little bit. Different ways you can do this. You could have done like a, uh, uh, a damp, not too wet, but a little bit damp towel and and uh, but sometimes that gets a little bit scary because you don't want to really remove your all your green and yellow. So I think this way is probably a little bit easier. 
I'll go ahead and add a few more lines here. Okay. Okay. Now, speaking of lifting, I want to show you something. You don't have to do this. I'm just showing you with mine. So let's say you're painting something and to give it a little bit more light, life to it, right up here at the top, I want it to be a little lighter. It's all kind of the same except for the darker values. So I want this to be even a lighter value, but I've already painted it, right? I've already painted the green. I've even painted some yellow over it. I'm going to take my flat brush. I'm going to put it in water, kind of blot it on my towel, and I'm going to lay this flat to be easier. And so I'm just going to lay my brush down and kind of move it gently. Might have to do it a couple of times. Just a little bit of a, a movement. And see what happened to that? See that it just lifted off a little bit of that color. Lightened it some. Add a little bit of highlight. It's an easy way to do that, to add a little bit of a highlight to your painting. You don't want to do it a lot, so I'm going to do it on this bottom here. Kind of lift off. Sometimes you have to add a little bit more water. I'm going to add on and just kind of move that brush a little bit. Okay, see that? How that looks. Now I don't think I did this on the original one, but I'm just showing you some because I was thinking of it when we were talking about lifting off. So this one I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep it at the top. Just have a little area. Just lifting off a little bit of that color. Sure, let me look at my comments, make sure nobody's saying anything. I don't think so. Okay. Just kind of softening the edges a little bit. You don't want just a line, but you know. So you can do that in any of your paintings. It kind of just lifts off a little bit of color lightens it a little bit, but you want to soften it. You kind of want to soften it. You don't want to just leave a, a white dot there or anything. Okay. You see how that makes it, just changes that whole look again. Just changes the whole look. Okay, guys. Well, I think we've got this done. I think we've done really well. You guys did good. I hope you've enjoyed it. You've got your stem. And you've got your, your leaves. I showed you even how to uh, uh, remove some of the color if you wanted it to, to add a little bit of a lighter highlight. We've darkened areas, we've got darker values. We've got a little bit of yellow in between that too. You can uh, gotta watch your now. The one thing about this thing here, though, the one thing about these little tablets is, see, it start it starts to kind of uh, the paper kind of moves a little bit on you. So you got to kind of be careful that uh, when it starts getting wet. Of course, I'm moving mine around. It's not completely flat, but see how some of the color went out. That's because there was a, uh, it bowed up just a tad bit. But, well, I'm happy with mine. I'm, you know, I hope you guys are happy with yours too.